Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, simulate a stock price in the future. And um, I'm going to do this using Priceline, which uh, with the price I recently looked up, and uh, Volatility that I also looked up. Now there's any number of websites where you can find these numbers. Um, so the first thing we're going to have to do after we look up a price and a volatility, generally the volatility you're going to get when you look it up is an annualized volatility and the first thing we're going to need to do if we want to simulate a price change over a one day period is convert the volatility to a one day volatility All right, and um, I'm going to do that by dividing the the annual volatility by the square root of the number of trading days in a year, which is generally 251 to 253. All right, so I'm going to use 252. That's the most common number of trading days in a year. All right, and if I do that, I see that the expected price change uh, for uh, price line in this case on a day is 1.2%, uh, while the annual price change is somewhere in the 30% range. Okay, and uh, th this means the price could go up or it could go down, and we expect it to be about 70% of the time, uh, plus or minus 1.2%, uh, excuse me, 1.92% uh, in a day. Okay, all right, so once we've done that, we can um, run over here and use the current price plus a random number generator to simulate uh, price changes um, any number of days in the future. What I'm going to do is simulate it for one month of trading days so we get an idea of what Priceline's price might look like uh, a month from now or a month from uh, month from this video anyway. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, reference the starting price which is 620. All right, I'm going to multiply that by the expected change in a day which is going to be 1 plus all right, and here's where I'm going to put in the random number generator. I'm going to use the norm inverse function all right, to generate randomly a return or a change based on the, uh, the expected price change, which is actually zero every day, all right, according to the random walk theory. We expect the price change to be zero every day with a standard deviation of 1.92%. Uh, Okay. All right. So once I hit enter here, we can see a simulated price change after one day. Uh, as long as you close all your parentheses properly, you can do that. All right. So there's one possible outcome uh, based on these numbers. Obviously, if the volatility changes, uh, this will also change. And since it's a random number, uh, this is not what the price is going to look like in one day, but it's a possible price in one day. All right. If I want to see a bunch of possible prices in one day, uh, in the in the Mac OS, uh, which is what I'm using, I'm going to hold the command and press the plus key. All right, to get a random, a new random number generated. All right, so you can see that okay, uh, most of the prices are, are within uh, they're pretty close range of the the 620. Okay. All right. Um, for day two, what I'm going to do is base it on what the price was after one day. All right. I'm going to copy this formula down once, and, and then I'm going to make uh, the changes that I need to make. Okay. All right. So the change I need to make here is that uh, I don't want to refer to uh, B2 over here. Uh, I want to refer to uh, E4. All right. Once I make that one change, I should be able to copy this formula down. Okay, so after two days, there's a possible outcome. We could be looking at a price of $640. Okay, and I just want to make sure the formula is correct. It looks like it is. And I should now just be able to copy this down. All right, and there's one possible outcome after uh, a month of trading. All right, there's 21 trading days in a month. All right, so uh, after one month of trading, there's one possible outcome. Here is another, all right, and I had uh, set up a chart ahead of time so you could see what it looked like, all right, in a, in a price chart, okay. All right, so then how is this useful? Well, one simulated return isn't all that useful, 
okay but if I do this many times say 500 or a thousand and record all the outcomes uh, I can start to develop a, a range within which we expect the price to fall over the next month okay so over here in the H column what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect a thousand um, 21st day outcomes over here and then I'm going to start calculating statistics uh, from those 21st day outcomes alright so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, reference that ending price okay and then to simulate it a thousand times what I'm going to do is kind of trick Excel uh, and use the uh, the data table feature to give me a thousand uh, outcomes of the 21st day okay all right so what I'm going to do then is go to the data tab and um, I'm going to select data table okay and uh, since the variables are in a column I'm going to select a column input all right and then I'm just going to select a blank cell so this is where I am tricking Excel now if you want to learn how to use a data table um, I have a video out there on, on YouTube that you can take a look at or um, there are many other fine videos that you can you can take a look at on YouTube a uh, data table is generally used to uh, test different outcomes in a model All right so that's that's how I'm tricking it okay so each one of these rows now alright is a simulated outcome after 21 days okay and then if I come over here I can start calculating statistics about what the price will look like in 21 days now since we expect the price move to be zero all right this should be pretty close to the current starting price okay and the current starting price was 620 mean was 621 now we can get an idea of um, if there's any skewness in this distribution by calculating the median or the 50th percentile Okay, so uh, in this simulated outcome, yeah, it looks like it is a little bit positively skewed. All right, I am going to calculate the standard deviation. All right, and I'm going to use the dot S for a sample standard deviation. <clears throat> okay, so while we expect the price in a month to be about where it is now, uh, we also expect that uh, it could deviate from there around uh, close to $55. All right. All right, and then I'm just going to calculate a few uh, uh, percentiles that, that we might be interested in here. Uh, I'm going to use the percentile. All right, and I'll, I'll use uh, one of the new dot uh, functions for percentile. All right, the, uh, the older functions down here, percentile, percentile rank, uh, you can use those, but according to... Excel um, these dot functions may be a little bit more accurate okay so two arguments the array and then the percentile that you're interested in okay so there's the uh, fifth percentile and uh, if I absolute reference this I can just copy the formula down so I don't have to write it several times Okay, so if we generate another simulation, another 1,000 outcome simulation, all these numbers should stay reasonably close to where they are now. Now, they're not going to be exact, but if I generate a few different iterations of this 1,000 outcomes, obviously that's not everything that can happen, but it's a pretty good representation of what can happen and you can see that um, we're 95 percent sure that we'll see a price higher than 535 about and uh, also 95 percent sure that we will see a price less than uh, 718 okay all right so there is a, a price simulation uh, using uh, Excel